destroy emotional thinking. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. If you didn't know already, I'm a diagnosed narcissistic psychopath, which means I'm a hybrid. I'm a psychopath and I'm a narcissist. There will be material in the future where I explain to you the distinction between a pure narcissist, a pure psychopath, and those that are like me, the hybrid, the narcissistic psychopath. Being what I am, and being the ultra, which means that I have been afforded a level of insight into what I am and that of my brethren to a level that has not been seen before, allows me to convey to you a considerable degree of understanding and insight which allows you to understand so much about my kind. It enables me to explain to you the way that we function, operate, the way that we see the world, the things that we feel, the things that we do not feel, how we view you, how we go about drawing you into our world, why we do this, what purpose it serves, how we go about it, the things that will happen, the things that are unlikely to happen, the things that will not happen. As part of all of this, I function with logic, cold, hard logic in my decision making. This isn't because I'm devoid of emotions. I do have some, but it's limited in terms of the amount that I have and also their application. Invariably, I function through the application of logic. I use logical thinking. I don't allow emotions to get in the way, and often they just don't as a consequence of what I am. Many people, leaving aside the issue of narcissism to begin with, are affected by emotional thinking. A simple example would be this. You're looking at a motor vehicle. It's a flash red Lamborghini. And that little voice in your head is saying, go on, get it. You look really cool. The chicks will dig it. Your mates will think it's great. Your neighbours will be envious. Buy the, buy the Lamborghini. Another voice will be saying to you, don't buy the Lamborghini. It's rather expensive. It's impractical. And you have a perfectly good vehicle that's only a year old. Those latter points are logical ones, but often in the heat of the moment, individuals are governed by their emotional thinking. And then six months later, having bought the Lamborghini and they're struggling with the repayments and realising that it keeps catching on the speed bumps, they think, why on earth did I make that decision? You were governed by emotion. Emotional thinking will crop up regularly in the context of the relationship with the narcissist. Initially, as a consequence of blinding you to the red flags, meaning you don't see them, or you do, but you pay no attention to them. So the individual that is monopolising your time, complimenting you excessively, monopolising your time so you don't see your friends, is causing you to change your day so that you're spending more and more time with this individual, is buying you gifts when it's not your birthday or Christmas and they barely know you, is talking about marriage and moving in at a very early stage, is texting you repeatedly throughout the course of the day 50, 100 times, those are all red flags. But because this person is interested in you and is complimenting you and flattering you and giving you great sex and saying how wonderful you are and how amazing you are and making you feel like a king or a queen, these red flags, fluttering in the wind as they are, you don't notice them. And your emotional thinking causes you to think, oh, they're just really into me, and they just want to spend lots of time with me because they're so wonderful to be with. And so what if they've bought me some gifts and it isn't Christmas or my birthday? They're just being nice. And it's exciting to think that this person wants to live with me or have a child with me or get married to me. I want that too. Of course, moving at such speed, as William counselled Prince Harry against, is a problem. It doesn't mean of itself that you're involved with a narcissist, but it is an indicator, and invariably, where you're an empathic individual, you're afflicted by emotional thinking. Emotional thinking isn't about getting hysterical. Emotional thinking is quite simply making a decision in the absence of logic. So, for example, I had a client who, when she was speaking to me, was crying. No, I hadn't made her cry. But rather, it was as a consequence of the fact that the narcissist had died. I explained to her, why on earth are you crying as a consequence of the narcissist being dead? I have thousands of clients who have given their eye teeth to be in the position you're in. She said, oh, I wouldn't expect you to understand HG. And I said, but I do. 
I understand that you're governed by your emotional thinking. It isn't logical to mourn the loss of your abuser. In fact, you should be shouting from the rooftops and cracking open the champagne. What you're being governed by is emotional thinking that's making you feel upset when you ought not to. And it behooves you, as part of your escape from the narcissist and remaining away from the narcissist, to ensure that your decisions are governed by logic and not emotional thinking. Emotional thinking causes you to believe that the narcissist will change, when the narcissist will never change. It causes you to believe that you can get back to the golden period somehow. You can't. The narcissist might reinstate it as a respite period, but you're never going to get it back as a consequence of what you do. It's down to the narcissist. Emotional thinking makes you believe that it's right to continue to have sex with the narcissist because the sex is good, even though the, even though the relationship is over. Emotional thinking causes you to think that you should have a civil life with the narcissist just because you have children together, rather than look to implement total no contact. Emotional thinking is the enemy within. And you, as an individual dealing with a narcissist, has two battles. The battle without, which is keeping us away from you, and the battle within, which is conquering your own emotional thinking. It is fundamental for you to do so. And you owe it to yourself and those that you care about to conquer that emotional thinking, to destroy it, to bring it down to the lowest level. The good news is that because it's your emotional thinking, you are in a position to do something about it. You are in a position to ensure that you reduce your emotional thinking to the lowest level. You can never get it to go completely away. It's like Japanese knotweed. You can reduce it to the lowest possible level and at that juncture live without making poor decisions. You will avoid narcissists far faster. You will not be afflicted by feelings of envy, jealousy, hatred, upset, anger, forlornment that you have done to date. The hurt will dissipate. Destroying your emotional thinking by breaking it down to the lowest level is hugely important as it allows you to move forward. It allows you to see the narcissist when we come near. It allows you to make decisions which are founded in logic. All of a sudden you'll notice that you're doing it. And all of those silly decisions that you once made that you didn't even realise were silly and stupid decisions, you will stop doing. And your life will be so much better. Many people are unaware about the presence of emotional thinking. They're unaware of the fact that it poses a triple threat with regard to causing flawed logic by corrupting your traits, both empathic and narcissistic, and with charging up what I call the battery of feeling, making you feel a particular way that you don't want to. That triple threat means that you're more likely to use emotional thinking and thus, in turn, keep your emotional thinking high and therefore, rather than use logic, you keep making decisions which you think are good ones, but they're not, and thus you remain trapped by your emotional thinking. It takes effort to start the process, but once it does, you soon gain momentum. And the most effective way of doing so is to apply my work, to lower that emotional thinking, to ensure that through a total no-contact regime or an almost total no-contact regime, you stay out of the five arenas of interaction. And in so doing, not only do you avoid the adverse behaviours of the narcissist coming to pay you a visit and reduce the risk of being hoovered, you also starve the narcissist of fuel, which from your perspective can only be a good thing, and most importantly of all, you reduce your emotional thinking down and down and down, draining that bathtub of emotional thinking so that it can no longer affect you in the way that it once did. No longer do you find yourself in that maelstrom, no longer do you find yourself wondering what the narcissist is doing, what's going on in the narcissist's new relationship, why the narcissist did what they did to you. Those racing thoughts and the pain associated with them will, I guarantee you, melt away. So how do you go about destroying that emotional thinking now you understand how important it is? Well, you must impose a total or near-total no-contact regime and to stay out of the five arenas of interaction. If you want to know how to do that with regard to your situation, you organise an audio consultation with me. Your circumstances will vary from the next person will vary from the next person. And I need to receive the information about your circumstances and the type of narcissist you're dealing with to then advise you in detail in a bespoke no-contact regime to ensure that you receive the best advice tailored to you. You also need to ensure that you tackle the emotional thinking in your thoughts. And in so doing, 
you access how to tackle emotional thinking and crushing emotional thinking with the mirror technique, both of which can be found in the Knowledge Vault. The destruction of your emotional thinking to the lowest level is fundamental, and you must be on board with recognising that this is something that you must do. You cannot free yourself of the narcissist without tackling emotional thinking. To think that you can coexist with a narcissist, that's emotional thinking. Believing that you can somehow persuade the narcissist to come round to your point of view, that's emotional thinking. And so many times in consultation, I have to explain to people that what they're explaining or what they're suggesting is governed by emotional thinking. And invariably, they are stunned to find that it is. So many people fail to recognise it, and in then, even when it's pointed out to them, they struggle to address it. You must understand that the only way to free yourself of a narcissist is to implement that total no-contact regime, or almost total no-contact regime, and destroy that emotional thinking by breaking it down to the lowest level possible. Utilise the vast repository of information that I provide to you by my videos and blog articles and access the Knowledge Vault to find further information linked to dealing with emotional thinking, where it comes from, what it does and how you address it to ensure that you implement, get out and stay out. Once you know, you go. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.